Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning everyone. Okay, kalau ikut dengan lesson plan yang <coughs> Cik Hafiz bagi tu, you guys supposed to submit your MPD by this week, am I right? I believe so, yes. Belum siap? Apa dia? Tak dengar. Uh, I believe so, yes. Oh, you believe so. So, how are your NPD uh, assignments coming along? Sampai mana? Not great. Not great, meaning to say? Are you not progressing well? Um, I guess my team is taking our time with that. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's actually <clears throat> quite confusing for me to go back and forth lesson plan that uh, Sir Hafiz did for you, prepared for you, and lesson plan that I prepared for my class. So, can we actually follow my lesson plan? <coughs> yes. Uh, because, okay, because uh, if you follow my lesson plan, your MPD is supposed to be, uh, you're supposed to submit your MPD by the, the week after you coming from the break. Kira minggu ni last kan? The next week you're going to have special break, kan? Betul tak? Ikut your calendar. Betul, Miss. Okay. So, um, kejap ya. If you follow my lesson plan, I will post it on the Google Classroom later. You have, you will have to submit your <coughs> MPD by week nine. Okay. Uh, so can we just follow that first two? Uh, okay. Sekejap. Your ENT, I mean, you are in a degree, yeah? meaning to say that you did your ENT 300 during your diploma year, yeah, betul? Some of my classmates ah. are uh, from matriculation and ah. foundation. See, so if you are, uh, I'm not sure whether, uh, you know, during matrix and foundation, you did some of the business plan. Kalau I did, then you have the experience of doing that. But let's uh, let's say if uh, none of you did the uh, business plan during matriculation and also foundation, it will be hard for you to start doing your blueprint. So for me, regardless, you did have experience doing the business plan or not, I will refresh back yeah, how you're going to start doing your business plan. Like business plan blueprint is same lah, cuma blueprint ni business plan with the technology punya invention. Ataupun innovation. Yeah, so kita kita bagi blueprint. Yeah. And then because of that, I'm going to have like two weeks here. Yeah, uh, uh, in week 10 and week 11, we're going to have discussion on administration operation. Week 10, week 11, we're going to have discussion on marketing and financial plan. So that you will know how you're going to start doing the blueprint. So when you prepare with that, uh, you boleh faham flow nak buat the blueprint tu. Okay, boleh? <coughs> boleh, Miss. Okay, nanti saya pause ya, the last empat. So, as for today, uh, kita nak kena cover two chapters ya. Uh, chapter 7 and chapter 8. Saya dah post the chapters on the Google Classroom. One more thing. I did Encik Hafiz uh, share with you the templates, guidelines and also rubrics for EMT 600. Tak ada rasanya Miss. Tak ada eh. Ah, tak ada saya share lah so that you boleh tahu macam mana nak buat. So maksudnya case study tu you buat, saya pun tak cek lagi. Case study tu you buat based on what? I mean like you do it ikut sendiri masing-masing punya formatting ke? I use my own formatting. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. At week. So let's begin with chapter 7. Are you guys ready yes, to start the class? Alright. Yeah. Okay, um, once in a while, kadang-kadang Saya akan rasa macam nak batuk. So, I will mute the uh, meet. Let's say 
if the sludge is um, changing tapi tak dengar apa-apa maksud saya terlupa nak unmute so can anyone uh, inform me ya yeah, ada uh, boleh miss okay. boleh boleh alright yeah. Okay, let's start here um, with chapter 7, uh, which is intellectual property. So we will talk about the ideas. Yeah? Ideas should be well preserved because uh, we all know that it's not easy to come up with ideas. Like, like in a short time. So the process, the process itself sometimes takes months and years to be developed into final product. Bila that ambil masa yang lama untuk develop our product. So for sure, we want to avoid our babies, yeah, meaning to say our new product, to be copied by other people. Uh, and we want to protect them by law. So today, we're going to discuss deeply on the part of the intellectual property in order for us to protect our uh, product. Right, introduction, any product of human intellect and creative individuals such as innovation, design, trading style, artistic work or literary work has value in the market. Okay, so kita punya product ni, in this case, kita panggil baby lah, kita yang create kan ya. In this case, our babies, the one that has our blood, our sweat and tears on it. So the term intellectual is used to portray the involvement of human imagination, creativity and inventiveness. So your your talent, your skill, and your ideas are also part of the intellectual term. The intellectual creations and its inherent value can be protected from being exploited by other parties through intellectual property protection. So we want to make sure yeah, there is something that we can protect our products from being freely claimed by others. Kita nak protect the idea, kadang-kadang tidur lambat, yeah? belum lagi bergaduh dengan semua orang sebab tak cukup tidur. So once we did our, uh, once we did produce our own ideas into funding product, tiba, tiba ada orang claim, itu dia punya. Uh, so intellectual property protection can protect our product from being claimed by ideas. So you can sue them for misuse of our ideas. The concept of intellectual property means that any unauthorized use of the creation or works by unauthorized parties is prohibited and protected by law. Literally means that <clears throat> no one can easily copy ataupun take our ideas and creation without our consent. Kena minta izin dahulu. Definition of intellectual property, Intele intellectual property ataupun kita panggil IP is defined as a legal entitlement attached to the expressed form of an idea or to some other intangible subject matter that enables its holder to exercise exclusive control over the use of the IP. So this definition, yeah, we quoted from Kennedy 2015, simply said about what is intellectual property all about in a theory manner. How can we have our intellectual property rights? Yeah, what falls under Intellectual property rights are the lima types. Yeah? There are five types of intellectual property which are patent, copyright, trademark, industrial design, and trade secrets. So we'll be discuss all of these types till the end of the chapter. Okay, types of invention protection in Malaysia, technological inventions are protected under the Patents Act 1983. The Act covers two key forms of protection, eh? patent also UI, utility innovation. Okay, patent. Kita pergi patent dulu ya. A patent is an exclusive right granted for an invention which is a product or, pro or a process that provides to a problem. The right that only meant for your exclusivity of the 
product usually something yang ada technology solution ya because we want to protect our innovation daripada being disclosed by public ataupun advantage taker. According to Patents Act 1983, a patent is an intellectual property right granted to an inventor. They are giving him or her the exclusive use or sell an invention for a limited time of period 20 years. So, lepas kita dah own the patent right, our company is the only company yang ada the override for any production related to sell it on your behalf. Okay, utility innovation is an exclusive right granted for a minor invention which does not require to satisfy the task of inventiveness as required of a patent. So, utility innovation provides IP right for those incremental and lower level inventions that will not be sufficiently inventive to qualify for a standard patent. Okay. Uh, this is due to the invention threshold below it compared to a standard pattern. That is the duty innovation requires an innovative action rather than an inventive action. So this is the intellectual pro property rights that involve just a minor innovation during the process and generally confined to improvements of a known product ataupun process. Dekat Malaysia, you uh, I need the, the practice ataupun it doesn't mean by the examiner in my IPO, Intellectual Property Corporation of Malaysia, to determine whether it fulfills the two requirements. Eh? Jadi, you I you I ni at point um interesting innovation ada eh? two requirements eh yang you kena ikut. One is novel and another one is industrial applicability. Okay, and uh, uh, utility innovation dekat Malaysia ni is protected for ten plus five plus five years from the date of filing. So the only limitation of UI Malaysia ni <coughs> seorang saja that only one claim is allowed for any field of technology. <coughs> Now, while protect an invention, katanya orang protect innovation, tapi invention pun kena protect. Eh? A pattern of utility innovation protection gives the owner of the pattern or utility innovation the exclusive right to stop others from manufacturing, using and or selling the owner's invention in Malaysia without the owner's consent or permission. So for us to be able to protect our intellectual property in the legal way without having to dispute for a useless ending. So tak ada siapa yang ada hak untuk reproduce, resell our product without our consent. <coughs> a patent owner has the right to use the patented invention or may license to other parties to use the invention or sell the right of the invention to someone else who will then become the new owner of the patents. Bila kita dah dapat ya, once we have the patent right, we are the rightful owner. So we can do whatever we want with our invention. Kita boleh licensekan dia to other company by charging some of the license fees of using the invention ataupun kita jual our inventions to others. Ikut you lah nak buat apa. Now, who can apply for a patent? Yeah? Any person may make, make an application for a patent or for a utility innovation either alone or jointly with another person. Person, the case the word person here is not limited to natural persons. Yeah, and that also includes, for example, the company. Okay, moving on with the patentable inventions. Yeah? For an invention to be patented, it must satisfy the following criteria. The first criteria is <coughs> functional or technical. Yeah? The invention must relate to how something works, what it does, what it is made of, or how it is made. Now, contohnya, kalau you produce a <coughs> or innovation or the invention of the uh, pen, yeah, the small pen that can transfer text from paper directly into a computer. So it has its function and it also technical beauty. The next criteria is new. The invention has not been publicly disclosed in any form anywhere in the world. So currently we do have vaccines for COVID-19. In the future, ada dia punya ubat sendiri. Maksudnya like pen, kita boleh panggil makan Panadol. So bila kita ada COVID, kita makan ubat ni. So in the future, it is one of the patentable inventions eh, because it is something new. The next criteria is involve an inventive action. 
the invention that could not be figured out by a person with average knowledge of the technical field. So, non obvious to a person skilled in the relevant field of technology. Macam mana diorang invented brain implant. So, tak semua orang tahu. So, doctor tahu pasal the function, the function of the brain. So, they can work together probably with the uh, engineers, yeah, untuk create the brain implant. So, the, uh, the late 80,000s doctors Realize yeah, electrical simulation of the brain could cause physical movement in humans and animals. So, dekat 20th century ni, dia orang buat lagi research, experiments that involve brain system, uh, sim stimulation yang change patient's mood and behavior pula. Uh, so, it's changing in uh, decades macam tu. And then the next criteria is industrial applicable the invention must be capable of being made or used in an industry it can be mass produced so you have to the, the invention yeah not pattern the invention it must be something that benefited to the industry let's say you have the idea of inventing a ghost catcher machine no? not tangkap hantu macam tangkap hantu macam ghostbuster so so i bet there is any industry yang involved with ghosts that can actually benefit from your invention so, tak boleh because it has not, uh, tak the criteria of industrial applicable. Tapi, if you invent, let's say, a new formulation of pesticide, uh, then it will be beneficial for an agricultural industry. So, you can pattern your punya uh, formulation of that pesticide. <coughs> okay, sekarang ni, uh, kita keep pergi for the, this one uh, of the uh, examples of the fighting case involving the right of patent between Apple and Samsung. I think I bet everyone is familiar with this case yeah? to which Apple claimed that Samsung had copied Apple in the early days. So after bertahun-tahun bergaduh, yeah, a fight in this case dekat mahkamah after years of fighting and then the case was cited to Apple. So this case has shown that with regards to invention, especially those that involving technology, patenting your design as well as your invention will give you an utmost authority. Okay, apa pula antara inventions yang tak boleh dipatenkan? Okay, non patentable inventions are discoveries, scientific theories and mathematical methods, literary, dramatic, musical or artistic work, Plant or animal varieties are essentially biological processes for the production of plants or animals other than man-made living microorganisms, microbiological processes, and the product of such microorganism processes. Schemes, rules or methods for doing business, performing purely mental acts or playing games, the presentation of information or some computer programs, methods for the treatment of human or animal body by surgery or therapy, and dynasty methods practiced on the human or animal body, anything immoral or contrary to public process policy. So these are all have been traditionally regarded as non-patentable subject matter, yeah, since they do not meet the requirement of a manner of manufacture. Okay, how can we know which of which uh, is patentable? The one that can be patented, yeah, this can be answered by determining whether uh, the claim innovation lies in the intellectual or academic realm ataupun dekat, dekat technical or practical realm. Kalau your invention tu adalah sesuatu yang technical ataupun practical, barulah dia boleh dipatenkan. <coughs> Pursuing a patent, patent expert recommends the following basic guidelines. So you can follow this guideline eh, in order for you to pursue a pattern. The first one, pursue patterns that are broad or commercially significant and offer a strong position. So the pattern must be significantly noble or preparatory. So your innovation mesti ada di punya originality di yang tersendiri yang tak ada lagi that no one has explored before to be called as novelty. Record and have them witness so that documentation secures a preparatory position. So, to ensure that it is your innovation from the start, so make sure you record them well and have them witness. Eh? That's why some of the technology innovators record themselves time to time yeah, to secure its proprietary position. The second guideline is prepare pattern plan in detail. Yeah? Plan should uh, outline the cost to double and market the 
innovation. Yeah, your plan must include how many costs incurred in developing the innovation. Analyze competition and technological similarities to the idea. Yeah, what are the competition or any technological similarities to your idea? You have to be clear about it. Detail out the perceived value of the innovation. Yeah, what makes you want to pattern your innovation? Now, of course, because it has its perceived value attached to the innovation. Then the next guideline, you have your actions relate to your original pattern. Like you stick to the original pattern plan during the early stages of establishing the pattern formula. The plan that you have prepared before, you have to make sure that you stick with it yeah, during the early stages in pursuing pattern. And then at a later stage, the plan may change. You don't license, not license the pattern at the point, keeping the patterns. So your plan uh, change accordingly to your decision, yeah? Whether you want to license the pattern or you want to keep the pattern only. And then establish an infringement budget, yeah? Infringement may feel legal damages. If your innovation gets copied by others, you will charge uh, these infringers some legal damages, yeah? Since you own that pattern, so you have to say. Thus, prepare realistic budget for prosecuting violation of the Pattern. So you can prepare a reasonable budget to prosecute a violation of the pattern. And then lastly, you have to evaluate the pattern strategically. Yeah, pattern process typically takes two years. Dalam masa tiga tahun, you ambil masa dalam tiga tahun for the pattern to be uh, uh, processed. Okay, and compare this with the life cycle of the proposed innovation or that would so dalam tempo tiga tahun, you know, within the three years of the process, you can compare with the life cycle of your proposed innovation ataupun technology. So, but kita tahu yang technology is one thing. So, you need to know how long your innovation will become obsolete in the industry. So, will the pattern be worth defending in three years or will the enforcement cost more than the measures collected? So, dalam tiga tahun, you nak tunggu for the pattern to be processed, you can ensure that even after three years or, or even ten years time pun, your punya technology tu uh, still <coughs> demanded in the industry. So, I can come back and whether it is worth for you to defend your pattern in three years ataupun enforcement cost lagi banyak daripada you punya defending tu. Now, term of protection for patents, yeah, a patent is protected to 20 years from the date of filing. So, that is a UI is protected 10 years from the date of filing. The term may be extended twice each on a five-year basis. So, the first, uh, the to the file can, it can uh, protect your UI for 10 years. But like, you wish to continue, you can wait, or you can continue another five years. The past 50 years are based that continue and identify. So, you need to say that it will provide total protection period of 20 years. So, once the pattern expires, the owner no longer holds the exclusive rights to the invention. So, the study has much said that in 20, year, 20 years' time, yeah, satu technology tu akan bertahan lepas dua tahun, dia akan advancing to another new technology. So, but tu dia boleh protect for 20 years sahaja. So, I want to let's say in the future, you have uh, worked together with some of your friends who have to come up with a new invention of technology. Start to apply that manner. So, this is where you can apply your pattern or UI, yeah, uh, dekat with the Intellectual Property Corporation or IPO, uh, dekat KL. Okay, uh, the cost of pattern application is 1050 untuk UI plus 900. So, nanti you can better later. Not sure about it. Okay, and then now keep them moving on with the international IP protection. The sporting, exporting firms still face problems of imitations and counterfeit products. So this is the most common problem in the world yeah, where firms are still exposed with the threat of imitation and counterfeit products. So the sitting in the global Okay, so when you decided to go global for your product, you will need uh, really so to facilitate patent filing in multiple countries with a single office rather than filing in each several hundred 
15 countries was established ya, untuk patentkan your innovation internationally. So, PCT ni akan help you to register your patent. Daripada you macam let's nak pergi endon, kena pergi endon uh, apply. Tak dia, you just go to the PCT to register your, to file your patent. Okay now, siapa yang administer ya? Who is the one that manage and minister the world intellectual property? It is Geneva which administers the world intellectual property organization, WIPO. So let's say you nak go pergi Indo, nak protect your patent, you kena pergi WIPO ni ya, regardless of the uh, country. You can tengok lah, the list of the countries that WIPO per tolong untuk administerkan. So this arrangement helps to reduce the cost of multiple patent applications by firms operating in the global market. So to ease the process of firms which operate their business in the global market yeah, to patent their innovation by reducing the cost for multiple applications. So this will indirectly contribute to the economy of the nation because it helps to curtail imitation and counterfeit product. So this, this contribute to the nation's economy in a way that it helps to restrain the widespread of imitation and quantified products. Right now we have discussed what pattern is all about. Can I not push you for the pattern? Upper terms still how to apply in Malaysia, how to apply globally. Yeah, now let's but they discuss the second type of IP, the second type of intellectual property, which is copyright. So copyright is a form of intellectual property protection or exclusive right given to individuals who produce original works of art and literature, music, film, sound recording, broadcast, derivative works, and computer programs. So uh, just now, we did talk about non patentable inventions. Yeah? Apa, 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 apa kind of antara patent yang, invention yang tak boleh dipatentkan and how uh, some of the list, yeah, literary, dramatic, musical or artistic work cannot be protected. Bila tak boleh patent, how are we going to protect our work kan? So we can protect it legally by copyright law. Okay, now this is one of the cases to which the artists uh, sue minus for using their design on the back sold by my new. So copyright has actually helped you to be able to protect your right and design as uh, can senang kan nak come up with the ideas to the design. So your hard work needs to be preserved. So this artist actually um, filing yeah, for their copyright sebab dia orang menang case ni. Okay, another case pula ya, the case of uh, the novelist and author of Ombak Rindu, dia gagal eh, she failed to sue the infringer. Uh, infringer, in this case, it's her publication company as she already agreed and signed the contract to which she has given the copyright of the novel to the publication. So, kita tak tahu kan, we don't know what happened before she signed the contract. Probably she was forced or then she got quoted her with promises but once she agreed and signed to give the copyright to the publication she is no longer the rightful owner penting for you to uh, copyright your work now copyright in malaysia a cop uh, copyright protection in malaysia is governed by the copyright act 1987 a work is protected automatically upon fulfillment of the following condition you know, the condition must be a sufficient effort that has been spanned yeah, to make the, or the work original in character. The work has been written down, recorded or reduced to a material form. The author is a qualified person or the work is made in Malaysia at the point the work is first published in Malaysia. Okay, apa yang um, copyright boleh, apakah kerja-kerja yang copyright boleh protect? The one is literary work, contoh macam novel, instruction manuals, computer programs, song lyrics, newspaper articles and sometimes of database. Dra ataupun dramatic works macam theater presentation and stage plays, musical works can also protect, uh, copyright can protect macam composition, artistic works macam paintings, engravings, photographs, sculptures, collages, architecture, technical drawings, diagrams, maps and logos. 
Separate two, corporate can also protect layouts or typographical arrangements. Uh, example given used to publish a word for a book, a type of recordings, much on jingles, sounds and films. Broadcast also can be protected, yeah, much in documentary live coverage of events. Or tapon derivative works. Yeah, derivative works ni macam producing Harry Potter movie series from the novel of the same name. Okay, ownership of uh, copyright. Yeah, uh, literary works including software and databases, theatrical, musical, or artistic, including photography. So the author or creator of the work is also the first owner of any copyright. In it, so in some situations, two or more people may be joint authors and joint owners of copyright. So if you're not the only author, your work will have joint owners for the copyright. So let's say you not bagi license for any productions. All the copyright owners, yeah, in this case, all the authors lah, need to agree with it. Okay, film, the principal <coughs> director and the film producer are joint authors and first owners of the copyright and the economic rights. So, uh, some master literary work, the main director and film producer will become the first owner of the copyright. So recording, the author and first owner of copyright is the record producer in the case of broadcast. In the case of broadcast, the owner of copyright adalah record producer. <coughs> okay, uh, the broadcaster and in the case of published edition, the publisher. So if works made by employee in the course of his or her employment unless there is any contrary agreement, the copyright in the work should be deemed to the person who commissioned the work or the employees. Hello, uh, if the work's made by employee, usually they are capable to say you, yeah? this is how the organization work, yeah? they make they make you sign the agreement where your work will be copyright law. That be the party company, they become individual and their company will become the first owner of the copyright. Terms of protections for copyrights. Uh, generally, copyright subsists during the, the life of the author's plus 50 years after his death. Eh? Even after the death of the copyright owners, yeah, their work will be, sting, uh, will, will be still being protected by copyright law untuk tempo 50 tahun. However, if a work has not been published during the lifetime of the author, copyright in the work continues to subsist until the expiration of 50 years following the year in which the work was first published. So if your work uh, if your work is published after your death, the copyright is subsisted until 50 years of expiration eh, followed by the year your work first published. In the case of a work with joint authorships, the life of the author who dies last is used for the purpose of calculating the copyright duration of the work. Okay, let's say at the Lima joint authorships, yeah, there are five joint authorships, 50 years' expirations will be calculated after the death of the fifth owner. So, bayangkan kalau uh, lima-lima panjang umur, okay, maka lama lagi lah not expired, not expired copyright too. Okay, legal rights of copyright owners. During owners of copyright works have the exclusive right to control the reproduction of the works in any form, including photocopying, recording, etc. The performing, showing or playing to the public, the communication to the public, the distribution of copies to the public by sale or other transfer of ownership, the commercial rental to the public. So these extra rights app, uh, apply irrespective of whether the works are copied partially or wholly. So this is how important yeah, for you to protect your work by copyright law. So you have many stays and you can do anything that you want to, to do with your work without having to worry people will claim it's there. So it's actually wrong yeah, to, uh, kalau let's say novel, you believe novel too and then you will realize that it's copyright the uh, cover about the first page of the novel. So you cannot just simply photocopy it, jual orang lain. Yeah, because they are, they are protected by the copyright. Okay, what constitutes copyright infringement? A copyright is infringed when an authorized person performs any of the following acts, yeah, reproduces in any metro form, 
perform, exhibit, show or plays or distribute to the public, communicate by cable or broadcast of the whole infringing work or a substantial part of its original or derivative form, make for sale or hire any infringing copy, sell, let for hire or buy of trade exposes or offers for sale or hire any infringing copy, possesses otherwise than for his private and domestic use any infringing copy, imports into Malaysia otherwise than for his private and domestic use and infringing copy. So basically, if other people do all of these, yeah, without your permission and without you knowing, then it can be infringed by the copyright law. And now moving on to moving moving on to the next type yeah, of intellectual property, which is trademark. So trademark is a distinctive name, mark, symbol, ataupun motto, identified with a company's product. So a trademark is a, is a sign which distinguishes the goods and services of one trader from those of another. So it is a sign yang uh, differentiate your products and services from the other existing one in the market. A sign includes words, pictures, logos, names, letters, numbers or a combination of these. A trademark is used as a marketing tool to enable customers recognize the product of a particular trader. So when your customer sees your trademark here, it can help your customers to easily identify your product. Okay, in the year of 2009, yeah, there was a case where an Indian restaurant in KL, namely Mac Curry, has been sued by McDonald's. Yeah, as McD claimed that the prefix of MC, as we call it, Mac, too, uh, it's actually there. So the owner of Mac Curry defends himself and also his company that Mac Curry is actually stands for Malaysian Chicken Curry. So, dia memang guna sama MC tu, Mac tu. Tapi, dia tak jual pun makanan western, burger, fast food tu yang sama macam Mac D jual. So, eventually after fighting years for this suit ya, Mac D kalah. Ha, padahal Mac D ni sebelum-sebelum ni pun dah pernah kalah with the lawsuit ya. But still insisted that the prefix of Mac D tu dia orang punya. They are keep insisting that the Mac is just tapi tak ada pun effort untuk the trademark kan prefix. Two. So only in 2012, barulah MACD trademark all the MC in their product. So barulah boleh menang case kalau nak saman orang lain guna trademark diorang MC ni. Tapi we all know that MACD is actually a global company. Eh? Every country has MACD. So diorang kena daftar the trademark to each of the country they are planning to sell their product. Ha, so that is why in the case uh, the case in Europe, make this sama lagi, make this sama lagi one of these local food restaurants yang nama dia Super Mac ya kalau tak salah saya. So, uh, eventually dia kalah juga case ni. Ha, sama uh, apa ni local restaurant dekat Europe ni, Super Mac ni kalah juga. Padahal dia dah register kan? Sebab kenapa Mac D tak register trademark dia dekat European Union Intellectual Property Office yang macam kat Malaysia kita ada my, EP, my IPO tu kan. So kalau you want to sell your products in Europe, nak trademark kan, dia tak boleh guna Malaysia punya license. Eh? You have to register and file your trademark dekat EUIPO. Okay, MACD ni rasa very confident because dia rasa yang the prefix of MAC tu very synonym with their product. So they have the right to own trademark. Mac. So daripada kes ni semua orang panggil Mac D ni as Mac Bully. Kalau boleh semua nak di samanya. But yeah you can see here kan how big the difference a prefix of Mac from McDonald's tu has brought to the world. Uh, semua orang tahu Mac ni untuk produk-produk makanan pada McDonald's. So pengajaran dia dekat sini you have to quickly register your trademark. Okay, now what are the functions of trademark here? Yeah? Uh, the first, it has to be origin function. Uh, a trademark helps to identify the source and those responsible for the products and services sold in the market. So uh, they are cooperate as indicators yeah, of the trade source from which product or services come or are in some other way connected. The second one, it has 
choice function a trademark enables consumers to choose goods and services with ease while shopping so if the products are nearly identical yeah, your product is nearly identical with the competitor's product your consumer can easily just choose your product at ease the next function it has a uh, trademark has quality function yeah? consumers choose a particular trademark for its known quality to ensure that customers may determine their preference for goods or services depending on identifying qualities uh, maintained by a trademark okay it also has marketing function trademark plays important roles in marketing it is normal for consumers to make purchases based on continuous influence of advertising. So advertisement attempt to provide the necessary publicity about the trademark and also the entity behind the trademark to the public. And then uh, trademark also has uh, the economic function. Eh? Established trademark is a valuable asset. So trademarks may be licensed or franchised. My town global company KFC, McDonald's, Coca-Cola are using franchising business model to use their trademark strategically all over the world. So franchise business model is very popular for the strategic use of a trademark. Now, why it is important yeah, for you to register your trademark? Yeah, the first one, the trademarks will provide you the exclusive rights. So registered trademark owners are conferred exclusive right to use their marks, their marks in trade. They also have the right to take legal action for infringement under the Trademarks Act 1976 against others who use their marks without consent. Yeah, they can also lodge complaints to the Enforcement Division of Ministry of Domestic Trade, Cooperative and Consumerism, MDTCC, for appropriate actions under the Trade Description Act 1972. So you have all the rights to use your trademark in any form you prefer yeah, and have the right to take legal action for any misuse of your trademark by other people. So trademark also could provide you the legal evidence, yeah? registration certificate issued by the Registrar of Trademarks under the Ministry of Domestic Trade Cooperative and Consumerism, MDTCC, of is a prima facie evidence of trademark on a ship. So a, certif a certification, a certificate of registration serves as an important document to establish the ownership of goods exported to other countries. So trademark ni akan jadikan uh, the legal evidence of your products or services. So, uh, Trademark ni will become, the legal evidence will become handy when you want to export your products to other countries without having to worry about any imitation or kind of fight of your products. So okay, let's say you not take legal action to the infringer, you can just provide the proof in the court that you have the legal, the legal evidence which is the registration certificate issued by the registrar of trademark. Law governing trademarks here yeah, in Malaysia, trademark is governed by Trademarks Act 1976 and also Trademarks Regulations 1997 Amendment 2001. Registration of trademark in Malaysia, registration of trademark is not compulsory in Malaysia. So uh, you may or may not register your trademarks. There is no compulsory of doing so. The government is there is no saying that if you want to produce your uh, your own product, kalau nak produce barang sendiri, you can just daftar trademark dulu. Eh? There is no such thing. Unregistered trademark may say obtain protection under common law by virtue of use and reputation. That even your firm decided not to register any trademark, sebab kena bayar kan? So if your company uh, decided not to register any trademark, you are still protected by common law by virtue of use and reputation of your firm. That's taking action against infringer can still be apply. So you still boleh take legal action towards infringer. Tapi kena use common law lah, tak boleh guna trademark law. Okay, registration of trademark in Malaysia. However, protection through usage is difficult and tedious. So even you may take legal action towards infringer, you know common law ni, the process itself is not easy. Sama macam case Mac Curry dengan Mac D tadi lah. Sebab Mac D tak daftar trademark dia susah nak fight in the court to convince that the prefix of MACD tu adalah MACD punya. The unregistered trademark owner must convince the court that the infringing act misleads the public. So there will be lots of work you need to do yeah, so that you can convince the court that the infringers have misled your product to the 
public. In order for you to do that, you need to collect as much as the evidence you can uh, to support your claim. Uh, and your product too has been misused by the infringers. So the infringing goods and services may be mistaken from their own goods and services. So the product and services that have been infringed may be mistaken from their own product and services. Apa tak ada bukti kan? Senang je nak tuduh-tuduh macam tu. Alright now, uh, registrability of trademark. Okay, tak semua trademark boleh didaftarkan. Eh? Not all trademarks can be registered. So for registration, trademark for goods and services must be distinctive and may take the following terms. It must be an invented word or words, other applicant's signature, words with no direct relation to goods or services, geographical name or surname. Ya, yeah, tak ada direct uh, relation to goods lah. Contohnya macam Mak Nilofa tu kan, nak check makan daging hayuan menangis. So, dia ada direct relation to goods or services. Sebab tu dia tak boleh di check makan. Any distinctive signs such as logos, pictures, symbols, etc. Not deceptive, confusing, contrary to law, scandalous or offensive. Not identical or similar to earlier registered trademarks and uh, not identical or similar to well-known trademark. A trademark cannot be registered if it contains words or representation prohibited under Trademarks Act 96, 1976 and Trademarks Regulation 1997. So, kalau ada ayat-ayat yang bawah ni, you tak boleh register under trademark which is patent, patented by Royal Letters Patent Registered Registered Design and Copyright, His Majesty Yang Di-Pertuan Agung, Her Majesty Raja Permaisuri Agung, the Royal Highness Sultans and their Excellencies Yang Di-Pertuan Negeri, Royal Emperor Crown Arms, Crest, Armour Bearings or Insignia, the Royal Army and Royal Malaysian Police, Red Crescent, Geneva Cross in Red and Swiss, Federal Cross in White or Silver on the Red Ground, Word or Representation or Asian and National Word. So, tak boleh nak include all of these words under your trademark, sir. Okay, trademarks registered in Malaysia are not protected abroad. So, if you register trademark in Malaysia, it is, can only be protected in Malaysia, not abroad. So, antara sebab-sebab maybe -sebab tak boleh sama dekat Europe tu, sebab dia tak cover Europe punya registration term of trademark. Sebab tu tak boleh nak lawan. Sama juga kat Malaysia, kalau you register kat Malaysia, you tak boleh nak bawa license trademark Malaysia tu kepada luar negara. If protection of trademarks is required overseas, it is necessary to apply for registration abroad, abroad separately. Yeah? If you decided to sell your product internationally and required to protect your trademark, so abroad registration of trademark must be done separately. Okay, what is the registration process for trademark? Every application will be examined to ensure registrability. Yeah? The application first needs to to be as me whether it is worth to be registered or not. So, kena follow yang apa pakatan-pakatan yang boleh diregister tadi lah. Kena follow all the registrability baru boleh didaftarkan. If there are any objections to registration of a particular trademark, the applicant may apply for hearing. So, you boleh apply for hearing if during the registration process tu ada uh, there are any objections or cat. Trademarks accepted will be advertised in the government. Gazette. So once accepted, your trademarks will be advertised in the government gazette. So government gazette ni adalah official journal uh, published by government which contain information macam uh, proclamations that bring resolution into operation, notification of government decisions and also subordinate legislation. So other of the company yang nampak your trademark in the government gazette, they cannot register your trademark. If no opposition, the trademarks will be registered. Kalau tak ada apa masalah, then your trademark will be registered. Registration certificate will be issued. Ni yang boleh jadikan legal evidence for you to fight in the court. Yeah? You have to pay for application fee for 250 ringgit. And once it's accepted to be advertised in government gazette and issuance of certificate, you will need to pay another 450 ringgit. <coughs> The terms of protection for trademarks, yeah, it is valid for 10 years from the date of application and may be renewed every 10 years. So, dia tak adalah kalau uh, protected for 20 years that they can protect as long as you apply to be renewed every 10 years. Okay, the next intellectual property is industrial 
designer and industrial design is the ornamental or artistic aspect of an article. So ornamental design pattern protects the design of manufactured objects. So ornamental design only covers the appearance of the products. So aesthetic pula is a core design principle that defines um, design's pleasing qualities. So aesthetic need I can include uh, factors such as balance, color, movement, pattern, skill, shape and uh, visual weight. The design may consist of three dimensional features such as the shape and configuration of an article or two dimensional features such as pattern and ornamentation. The design feature must be applied to an article by any industrial process or means of which the features in the finished article appear to eyes. So the finished article not only have to be applied to the eyes but also judged by the eyes. So literally means that you can actually see the product. Okay, ownership rights. A registered industrial design provides an exclusive right to make, import, or sell, or hire out any article to which the design has been applied. So you, Mr. Rasala, someone said that you have the rights to do anything that related to the applicable of the design. The owner of a registered design has the right to take legal action against an infringer within five years from the act of. Infringement. So, as the owner of registered design, you have the right to take legal actions towards infringement. Dalam tempoh masa lima tahun. Now, what is a registrable industrial design? An industrial design must be new at the date of application. So, the industrial design must be relatively new at the date of application. Kalau cakap new tu maksudnya it has never been in the industry and also in the market. Design is considered as new only if it has not been made available or disclosed to the public in any way whatsoever in Malaysia before the filing date. So this is why when you are designing something that is new, you need to quickly register sebelum orang lain uh, could copy them eh? and then you will have the right to the design. <coughs> so, what sort of design is excluded from registration? Eh? Apa yang tak boleh didaftarkan under industrial design? Okay, uh, an industrial design is not registrable if it does not have a clear aesthetic appearance. Yeah? It's a method or principle of construction. Design features detected solely by function, integral part which uh, consists of features that depended upon the appearance of another article differs only in material details or in features commonly used in the relevant trade as a trade variance and the design those are contrary to public order or morality. Now filing of industrial designs uh, as claims are based on a first to file rule basis, filing of an industrial design should be made at the earliest possible time or before an article is disclosed to the public. So it is at best to register your design as early as you can yeah, before it becomes disclosed to the public. Prior disclosure will destroy the novelty of the design. Therefore, extreme care should be exercised to ensure secrecy of the design. Kalau uh, if it became known to public, the novelty will be shattered. So your design could no longer become as new in the industry. So in order for you to avoid from your design become known to the public, you can be extra careful uh, dengan confidentiality of the design. It is easy to say that you should not believe anyone even it's your family. Uh, be secretive as you can. Okay, term of protection for industrial design. A registered industrial design is given an initial protection period of five years from the date of filing and is extendable for a further two consecutive terms of Five year age. The first day of filing, too, it can protect your industrial design for five years. After that first five years expired, you may continue for another five years. The first pro time expired, fully renew another five years. Then that's it, yeah. So the maximum protection period is 15 years. So, how extensive is industrial design protection and industrial design registered in Malaysia is only protected in Malaysia? So, much a copy, right? Yeah. Uh, some trademark, so benda uh, yang berlaku di Malaysia boleh di-protect di 
Malaysia saja. In order to have your design protected in other countries, applications for registration will have to be filed within six months from the earliest date when it was first filed in any of the Paris Convention member countries. Okay, who can apply for design registration? I don't like someone who apply for a uh, design registration only the owner of a design may apply to register the design though an agent can be authorized to make application so designing saja yang boleh register for the industrial design uh, agent ni bolehlah uh, dibenarkan to make application on the behalf of the owner of a design where an applicant's other residence or principal place of business is outside Malaysia, the applicant shall appoint an agent registered in the register of, of industrial design agent. So, if you want to use an agent, uh, as an owner, you want to use an agent, boleh, tapi uh, dengan syarat you tak duduk kat Malaysia lah, baru you boleh apply kan um, to register your design in Malaysia. All application for the registration of industrial design must be lodged at the Industrial Designs Registry Intellectual Property Corporation of Malaysia. All right, now the last type of intellectual property is trade secrets. Yeah, information that is critical to the business success but does not qualify for patent, trademark, copyright or industrial design protection. So if information, apa saja information yang are related to the business success tapi bila you nak try to protect your work, your secrets ni, Tak boleh patent by patent, trademark, copyright atau industrial design tapi dia boleh dilindungi dengan trade secret. So confidential information that the business needs to keep it secret to help maintain its competitive advantage. Yeah, sebab you nak protect lah the information untuk ber, uh, daya saing dengan industri. So you need to keep the information hidden uh, so you will acquire the competitive advantage for your business. So, apa dia ya? What kind of, of information that need to be hidden from competitors? Yes, uh, any familiar pattern, physical device, idea, process or other information that provides the owner of the information with a competitive advantage in the marketplace. So you can protect it with trade secrets. Okay, characteristics of information that can be classified as Trade secret. Apa jenis information yang boleh dikategorikan sebagai trade secret? The first is not known outside the company. So the people outside the company should not find out the information. Known on the inside the company on a need to know basis. So the, the people inside the company knows it, knows it for the sake of the business operation. Safeguarded by stringent efforts to keep the information confidential. So the information needs to be preserved strictly. Valuable and provides the company a compelling competitive advantage. So the information gives the value so that uh, the company can protect its competitive advantage. Develop at great cost, time and effort. So information ni uh, memerlukan banyak masa yeah, and effort in order for you to develop this kind of information. Cannot be easily duplicated, reverse engineered or discovered and can last longer than the term of a pattern. Right, how to protect trade secrets? You can protect it by physical methods and also written confidentiality agreement. You can uh, make it as a restricting, you must restrict it to keep personnel. Uh, that's more access to this information. Lovely documents, confidential documents are stamped private and confidential and also restricted. Yeah, the uh, documents need to be labeled so that people will know that it is a secret. Password protection, yeah, for confidential computer files. Uh, gunakan password kalau, uh, if it is safe in the computer, then you use the password. Lock, lock books for visitors and access to confidential materials, yeah. If there is people who want to access the information, you have to, uh, you need to ask them to write down their particulars so that we can trace them later if there is any uh, whistleblower. Educate over security measures, gunakan alarm at the first security personnel. So another way for you to protect trade secrets is by uh, written confidentiality agreement. Yeah, yeah, a firm asks employees to sign a confidentiality or non-disclosure agreement. If they then tell everyone about it, this is a breach of confidence and you can 
take legal action against them. So this happened mostly before you joining a company at the port organization to which uh, the company will ask you to sign a confidential or non-disclosure agreement. So let's say you just sign, but you still uh, failing to protect all of the information, you will have to bear with the legal action so the company can take legal action towards you. Right, these are the reference. Just let's say in the future, we'd like to uh, retrieve them. Yeah, you can you can follow all of these reference. So that is all for uh, chapter seven. Intellectual property. Do you have any questions for this chapter? All right. So let's take a five minutes break here before we proceed with chapter eight. Bleh. But so we're back uh, eleven twenty.
Okay, let's continue to chapter eight. Yeah, Are you guys ready? Holy miss. Yeah. Okay, if you still remember, yeah, um, the week uh, before we start to, kita dah cover NPD. Okay, and we, we did discuss about the product development process. We start with uh, R&D, lepas tu uh, product design and then we do concept testing. Lepas concept testing, build the prototype and then the last process is test marketing. So after all of these processes undergone, kita kena commercialize product. So in chapter 8, we will discuss on the commercialization of new technology based product. Right, as for the introduction, the word technology based product in this unit encompasses physical products, services and processes. So this chapter mainly discuss about the technology based product in terms of physical products, in terms of services, and also processes. New technology-based product is the output developed from innovative activities that take place in a successful R&D, which is research and development. In order for your product to be classified as new technology-based product, it must have undergone the innovative activities from a successful R&D. Research and development activities may take place in public universities or research institutes owned by government or private research institutions. So we talk about this on chapter 3, yeah, where these institutes giving you the opportunity yeah, to develop your new technology-based product because of they have the facilities needed for any research and development processes. <laughs> Okay, uh, technology-based industry in Malaysia, the future of Malaysian technology-based industry is very much dependent on locally de developed technology-based ventures. So we mostly still depend on the local technology-based ventures by far. So the success of homegrown technology-based venture is determined by the strength and efficiency of commercialization of R&D, research and development, output, and enforcement of intellectual property, IP law in Measure. So what we have seen all the success of our own technology based base venture is because of our uh, strength yeah, in commercializ commercializing the R&D as well as our determination in protecting all the intellectual property law by uh, intellectual property by uh, using the law enforcement. Okay, commercial, commercialization of research and development, the products of R&D will not generate revenue unless they are successfully 
commercialize. So lepas you dah develop a new technology based product, you tak boleh nak rest assured and you have to keep on working on how can you successfully commercialize your product sebab uh, lepas commercialize lah baru you will only generate revenues. Commercialization of research and development refers to efforts taken to introduce new technology based product to the market with the aim of gaining commercial returns. The only people who know your new product usually those who work closely with you. So, in order for people to know your product and uh, for you to gain revenue from the sales is with the commercialization of the R&D. So, the commercial value of a research is measured by the contribution of the research findings to the development of new process, new services or product. In order for you to know whether your commercial has value or not, you can measure from the perspective of how big the contribution of your research findings to the development of your new product. Okay, now, um, taking R&D output to the market. Okay, <clears throat> there are two approaches through which research findings could be brought to the market. Firstly, by disseminating innovation freely through academic publication, such as journals and proceedings of research conference, this approach does not promise maximum benefit to the innovator. So this is the most approach done by innovator. Yeah? They commercialize their product through academic publication. Yeah? Why? Because it is the easiest way of telling people the existence of your product. So uh, approach ni um, tak beneficial sangat pada innovator because during the conference people might take advantage of your idea especially if you have not yet patented your work. The second approach is allowing the researcher which is innovator to monopolize the benefits of R&D in the form of intellectual properties and commercialization of the IP. So uh, there are options yeah, uh, for you to commercialize research and development. Ada lima options to commercialize R&D. The first is outright sale of the R&D output before securing intellectual property. So outright sales of the R&D will offer uh, the buyer full security to invest in the technology without having any fear yeah, of their license being revoked ataupun any possible competitors. And the second option is um, get into licensing agreement with established private organization after securing IP. So after you secure intellectual property of your product, you need to get into licensing agreement dengan established private organization yeah, for them to have the right to produce and sell your product. Get into a zonation agreement with buyer. Your ownership is transferred to assignment to the buyer and innovators may enjoy some uh, certain amount of profit, yeah, agreed upon be between you and the buyer. Spin off starting, spin off by starting an adventure from within the established research organization. Dekat sini, despite of being an innovator, you are already can feel the sense of having a role of uh, technopreneur. Yeah, and you decided to venture new business, but within the established research and development institution. Spin out by starting an adventure independent of the research organization where the new technology based product was developed. So you venture your business independently yeah, without getting any established R&D involved. Right now, from this figure, yeah, started off with uh, research and development. You can choose whether to outright sales yeah, before securing intellectual property. Then you can apply for the patent so that you can start commercializing your product by assigning agreement with existing private sector organization in order for them to establish licensing agreement. Then either you decided to start venturing business within the established R&D institution ataupun leave the institution, leave the established R&D institution and you start venturing business independently yeah? um, uh, without the... Uh, daripada sokongan R&D institution for you to start the production of your product. 
Okay, let's dis- uh, let's discuss on the first commercialization options here, which is outright sale of the R and D R and D output. The researcher may decide to sell the R and D output before applying for patent rights to any of the following reasons. The first reason is the cost uh, cost to secure a patent right is higher than the product potential. Value. So, bila you rasa say the cost to secure the patent to mahal dan tinggi daripada produk you sendiri, so you can use these options. The other, uh, the, the other reason is that the new technology-based product is competing with a promising substitute product which is the developed technology is already mature and you you facing the substitution stage. So, your product uh, similarly competing with the competitors yang ada potential untuk substitutekan your product dengan product diorang. Another reason is high market development cost required because market is not yet ready for the product since your product it's a new product which is not publicly known in the existing market so you will need to have you will need to create a new market so bila you create new market ni for the new product ada Cost yang uh, the cost incurred will be high. Ah, uh, sebab development process tu akan start daripada beginning. Okay, now uh, another reason for you to use this option is to avoid the hassles associated with patent application. So, ah, uh, sebab you know nak, nak apply patent ni banyak proses-proses dia, so you malah ah uh, bila malah so you choose that this option to outright sale of the R and D output. Now, uh, selain pada uh, outright sale tu, you can choose uh, to commercialize your product by licensing your patent. So, licensing a patent to an established business organization is considered as one of the most viable means of commercializing a new technology-based product. So, in commercializing your product, licensing a patent to an established business organization will help to make your product viable to the market and also consumers. <coughs> a patent holder who licenses his patient, uh, his patent is known as licensor, while the patent, well, the person to whom the patient, the patent is licensed to is called the licensee. So you as the innovator who patented your product will be called as licensor, ataupun kita panggil license holder, and the person who you license your patent to will be called as licensee. When a patent is licensed to a licensee, the licensee is given the exploitation right. You sebagai licensee ataupun license holder have the exclusive right, yeah? Uh, what the person who you license to will have the exploitation right. So, exploitation right means the right to create, market and sell something based on what the patent protects. So, they have the right to create market and sell your patented product on your behalf tapi ikut apa yang patent to protect meaning to say you yang bagi permission to to uh, which can they create market and sell it. Reduce bacteria that... Okay, why does innovator use this option to commercialize of the uh, option there? It is because in return, the licensor will expect punish a return in the form of royalties from the licensee. So, a patent license basically is a legal contract that spells out terms and conditions. For example, the area of exploitation allowed by the licensing agreement. So, are there certain areas saja yang your licensee are allowed to export the right of the license patent. Performance obligation demanded by the licensor over the licensee in order to ascertain consistent financial return. So, you need to make sure your licensee is able to give outstanding performance yeah? and you also need to monitor their performance so that the financial return is consistent. The amount and frequency of royalties to be paid by the Licensee, yeah, the, uh, your licensee will give you the royalties depends on how much you nak charge dorang. And uh, dan berapa kali dorang kena bayar royalties tu. In this context, a license is revocable or cancelable if certain terms and conditions are not met. So, license tu akan, uh, akan revoke ya yeah, if your licensee does not meet 
certain terms and conditions yang both of you, uh, licensee and licensor, has made before signing the agreement. Good. Next, commercialization option is patent assignation. <clears throat> patent assignation is an irrevocable exploitation right given by an assigner to an assignee. The assigner refers to the original patent holder. The assignee is one who receives assignments of the patent. So the exploitation right given to assignee by assignee is not revoked. So assignee is upper. Assignee is the innovator, which is you, or uh, the owner of the patent. And the assignee is the person who you give the assignments of the pattern to. So assignation is not li not li licensing. Assignation entails the sale or outright transfer of the pattern by the assignee to the assignee. So it involves sale or outright transfer of the pattern by you to your assignee. Assignation is sought if an uh, irrevocable exploitation right is needed by the parties involved. The disadvantage of part Patent assignments that when assignee fail to pay royalties, this will not revoke the rights that already assigned to the buyer. So unlike I said, a patent, patent assignation will not be revoked the expectation right even if the assignee fail to pay royalties to you. Okay, valuing a pattern, determining the monetary value of a pattern is very important. Because it helps the patent holder to determine the right value to, to sell the patent to assignee and the right amount of royalties to be charged to patent licensee. So you need to determine how much the value of your patent so that you can sell the patent with the right value to your assignee. And also, uh, you have to decide the right amount to be charged to licensee. So you may decide the worth, the value of your patent after taking into consideration some of the factors. Yeah? The, the, the first factors is the size of the potential market. Berapa market yang you rasa, berapa besar market yang akan uh, willing to accept your product. And the second one is the value of comparable patterns. And the third one is the validity of the pattern, mean, meaning to say that the risk of the promoted pattern to be invalid if the inventor does not meet the uh, statutory requirement of uh, obtaining the pattern. Contohnya macam uh, bukan inventors ada dah published the information about the invention ataupun had offered the invention for sale before the date of application. So maksudnya pattern tu dah known to the other people. Okay, and the fourth factor is you have to determine if the your pattern overlaps with other patterns. So the higher the probability that a pattern may overlap with another, the lower the value of the particular pattern. So orang nak berebut dan nak register pattern too. So you have to be careful in this. So if, you have, if you want to register your pattern, you have to ensure that nobody else is following your pattern. And then another factor is you need to assess how much it costs here yeah, for someone to use the next best pattern instead of buying or subscribing license of your pattern. And the last factor that yeah, uh, to value pattern you need to determine the reasons for selling or licensing the pattern right moving on with the next option of commercialization which is spin off into a new venture alternative to licensing and as a nation an innovator may choose to commercialize his invention through the creation of a new technology-based venture. So besides of you license the pattern ataupun you assign the pattern, you may also do commercialization by choose to venture business untuk you punya new technology-based product. In this context, the innovator assumes the role of a technopreneur by creating a new venture from within an established organization like a university or a Company. So by right, you the other uh, feel the sense of being an entrepreneur. Uh, so for this 
case we call as technical paralysis but involving technology product and uh, you create a new venture within an established organization macam university ataupun uh, syarikat company. In venturing into the spin-off company, the technopreneur himself exploits the pattern rights he had secured. So you exploit the pattern rights yang you dah secured. Prior to venturing into a new technology-based business, a technopreneur needs to develop a business plan, determines financial requirements and six source of financing. So in order for you to venture into new technology-based business, you need to do the TBIB, which is technology-based business ID blueprint for your company. Okay, now, uh, last option you can do for commercialization is spin out into an independent new venture. So, besides venture from within the established R&D institutions, university, ataupun established business organizations, the innovators may also have the option to leave the parent organization and establish an independent new venture to commercialize the pattern he so in this context, the innovator is in the role of the technopreneur by creating a new venture independently. So besides you relying on the established R&D institution, universities, ataupun established business organization, you may also decide to, st uh, to stand by your own yeah, uh, dengan venturing your own business. So the kat sini, you are so ready to be called as technopreneur. So you are not only uh, innovator, tapi you also an entrepreneur. Similar to a spin-off venture in a spin-on, spin-out in spin in a spin-out venture, the technopreneur himself exploits the pattern right he had secured and needs to develop a business plan prior to venturing into the new venture. So in uh, in spin-out, you also exploit the pattern right secured by yourself, and then you need to come up with TBIP. However, in the case of a spin-out venture, the technopreneur has to bear the risk of the new venture alone. So unlike spin-off, you bergantung kepada established R&D institution, bergantung pada university ataupun established business organization. Dekat spin-out, you need to rely on yourself and also you need to bear the risk alone. <coughs> okay, now we all know that starting of the business will come up with risk. Uh, apa dia risk untuk new venture Okay, uh, in spinning out or spinning out into new venture The technopreneur faces the following ways There are three uncertainties of the risk The first one is technological uncertainty The second one is strategy uncertainty And the third one is uncertainty in first time Buyer So technological uncertainty is associated with Determining order winning product configuration Determining the most efficient production technology and also determining the level of difficulty to develop the technology. Okay, uh, the next race is strategy uncertainty. New products are often characterized by the absence of a proven marketing strategy. Hence, firm needs to utilize more resources in order to ensure success. Since you are new in the market, no old marketing strategy that existed can be used. Uh, therefore, you need to utilize more resources so that you'll be able to succeed in venturing your new business. The last race of a new venture is uncertainty in first time buyers. Customers of a new venture normally are first time buyers. The marketing task is to substitute what buyers use to purchase and to encourage these buyers to make initial purchase of the new product. Unlike other existing business, yeah, they don't have their own customers sendiri, yeah, because they are already known in the market. Since your customers are not familiar with your products and uh, your business, you can uh, uh, acquire your customers by convincing your customers that your products can actually help them in solving their problems. Okay, barriers to entry. A new venture may face difficulty to establish entry into a particular industry. So, venturing a business is not as easy as it sounds. So, macam nak buat business, okay, jom jom buat business. Tidak, ya. You often heard, ya, many businesses close down in a short period of time. This is because of difficulty to enter a certain industry. So, but you fail untuk 
enter that kind of industry. So entry barriers refer to the accessibility of new venture into a particular industry. Other factors that contribute to entry barriers adalah contohnya macam the cost of adopting technology in the, in the industry selalunya sangat tinggi. So you cannot enter the industry. Access to distribution channel. It's not easy for you to access the distribution channel. Access to raw material pun susah. Yeah, cost in efficiency due to lack of experience. The cost of capital required to launch the new venture. So some of these barriers disappear as the industry develops. Yeah, barriers are often disappeared when the industry has been developed. Bila industry dah berkembang, barulah barriers ni senang untuk orang lain. Barriers ni hilang dan senang untuk entrepreneur lain to enter. Alright, now in order for you yeah, to stand in chance increasing your new venture survival, you may need to consider some of the incubators. So incubators can be established by either as a business incubator ataupun technology incubator. So business incubator means a facility with adaptable space that a new venture can lease on flexible terms and at reduced resources. So, kalau sebenarnya orang yang baru start business, it's hard for them to find a suitable uh, facility. Kalau sejumpa pun kadang mahal. So business incubator can actually help you to find a uh, adaptable space dengan sewa yang murah. The purpose of incubate, incubator in the early stage of the new venture is to increase the chance of survival for a new startup business. So business incubators offer financial, managerial, technical and administrative support services which are available on sharing basis. So most incubators limit the time for new venture occupying space in the facility ranging from 2 to 5 years. So when you use these incubators within the period of 2 to 5 years, you need to quickly develop your business so that you can stand by your own. Tak boleh nak rely sampai bila-bila for these incubators because some of the new entrepreneurs also need to use these incubators. So after 5 years, you need to leave the incubators and develop, uh, expand your business by your own. Okay, now moving on with the technology life cycle. If you NPD, uh, I teach you NPD can. Uh, so if you listen to the NPD, I did mention about the product life cycle. So the life cycle of the product. So technology also have their own life cycle. So the performance of the energy and product has a recognized pattern over time. So kita, we are all well informed how fast the technology is advancing each day. So kena tengok dekat surrounding ya. Just look at our surrounding and kita uh, bandingkan dengan dulu-dulu banyak dah technology that is being advanced and also improving. This is because the fact that innovator understands the pattern of the, the, of the technology they invented. So the innovator dia tahu Oh, dah technology ni takkan tahan lama because it's advancing each day. So, dia tahu sebab dia faham apa itu life cycle. This pattern can be very helpful in the strategic planning process of the technology-based venture. So, as innovator, you can recognize yeah, the pattern of your own technology for you to, uh, for your technology-based venture succeed in the long time. Kalau you rasa yakin dengan uh, your punya invention of technology, but you diam je without knowing the fact that your technology will become obsolete over time. So nanti your punya business pun akan tutup. Okay, managing a technology venture requires deep understanding of the life cycle of the technology, product, process and system. So you need to know the life cycle of your technology ya, bila dah masuk stage ni, what is the things that you need to do, uh, things like that. Okay, now, a, technolog a technological rate of performance improvement is dependent on the efforts such as R&D devoted to the technology improvement. Lepas you dah establish a certain technology, R&D needs to be done thoroughly yeah, time to time for you to keep up from being an outdated. Memang you dah come up with this technology first kali. Yeah, but you cannot stop that. Once your product dah pergi tak sepul, you are now very confident. So you stop there. Now you need to keep continue our R&D to do the improvement for your product to become better and better. A new technology may have higher, uh, higher limit of performance for the same parameter and may replace the older technology at certain period of time. That is uh, what improvement should be done. 
technology technology performance is expressed in terms of any attribute yeah, such as density in electronics industry for example number of transistors per chip speed in mile per hour energy consumption in kilowatt per hour or full consumption in mile per kilometer so the technology performance become vulnerable to substitution or obsolete when a new or better technology emerges so bila ada teknologi baru saja you punya performance akan menurun that is why uh, technology performance need to be always updated with the current era okay i did mention ya yeah, about the product has a life cycle daripada stage of new product development sampai ke maturity stage technology juga ada its life cycle eh? it starts on the new invention period growth stage and also maturity stage Right, stages in the TLC, technology progresses through a three-stage uh, TLC, yeah, the technology life cycle, which is the first one is the new invention period or known as the embryonic stage, the technology improvement period, which is also known as the growth stage, and the last one is the mature technology period at the point maturity stage. <clears throat> So the first stage in TLC at the potential life cycle is new invention period or embryonic stage. Yeah, okay, kita boleh panggil as embryonic stage. Okay, the new invention period is characterized by a period of slow initial growth. This is because experimentation and initial problems are worked out of there. System. So at this stage, everything is still new, so it needs some time to be adapted since uh, continuous experimentation is needed supaya nanti uh, tak ada masalah will be occurred later. So many expenses are incurred at this stage, tapi bila cost naik, sales pun tak generated lagi sebab it is still in the early stage. The second stage in TLC is technology improvement period ataupun uh, known as the growth stage. Yeah? The technology improvement period is character characterized by rapid and sustained growth, also known as the growth stage. So it, uh, it is represented with the penetration of the market yeah, for the new and latest technology. Now, the last stage in TLC at the point technology life cycle is technology mature period at the point maturity stage. So, the mature technology period starts when the upper limit of the technology is approached and progress in performance slow down. The standard slow down. Yeah? This occurs when the technology reaches its natural limit. The technology becomes vulnerable continuation for the maturity stage yeah? uh, when technological substitution takes place ataupun bila technology dah become obsolete. So that is when better new technology emerges. So dekat stage ni, technology will become vulnerable if there is any substitution for the technology ataupun the technology itself dah jadi obsolete. Probably because of the threat of new and a better technology datang. Investment in the ongoing technology at this stage may be riskier even some, even even though some may thrive in the declining technology so uh it will be risky yeah if you still want to invest at this stage even in some cases there are investment that are thrive dalam declining technology tapi well, like people say it is always better self than sorry okay tlc and the market in commercializing new technology or product one must identify the stage of the technology in its life cycle so it is crucial uh, for the technopreneurs to identify and also to understand the stages of the technology life cycle technology under development stage has no real income producing value and the technology that is not being marketed which is technology on the shelf provides no return so the early stage ni tak ada no uh, that tak ada real income by far yet yeah when technology reaches the market, it will generate income. So, when bila technology masuk kepada pasaran, barulah ada uh, income. Okay, the technology market life cycle, a combination of the both two. As technology develops along with the recognized technology life cycle, the technology begins to penetrate its market and subsequently experiences market Growth. The corresponding market growth phases of the technology is called the technology market life cycle and is expressed as market value.
Okay, before you could enter into the technology market life cycle, you kena faham dulu ya product life cycle, TLC. TLD, TLC ni, product life cycle is PLC. So subsequently, as the product life cycle is built in accordance with the sales revenue of a single company. Uh, bila dia uh, accordance to the sales of PLC ni, ikut sales revenue of single company, TLC pula should be seen from more comprehensive view point. So technology life cycle ni is based on the R&D activities and trends of patent application dalam sesuatu industri. So by, by passing through the product life cycle, the technology life cycle is going from growth to maturity. So technology life cycle could produce various product life cycle but it is necessary to mention that the product life cycle generation begin mostly in growth or maturity stage. And in most of the cases there is not any real product in introduction phase of technology life cycle. Market life cycle plot they based on the technology maturity. So technology life cycle and market life cycle viewpoint should be seen very similar but the technology life cycle is mostly six for the R&D activity. Tapi market life cycle pula they're looking for the customer classification, psychological behavior of each group and also the market behavior. Kalau market life cycle starts by the first sales, they also start dengan first idea generation point. Okay, now these are the technology market life cycle phases. Uh, the technology development phase, are the application launch phase, are the application growth phase, technology mature phase, technology substitu substitution phase and also technology obsolescence phase. The first phase is the technology development phase. So at the technology development phase, as the market uh, the market does not recognize the technology at all. So during this time, the researchers are putting in much effort and utilizing significant amounts of resources to create the technology, develop prototype and testing the new technology. So during this period, revenue is not generated and wherever possible time spent in this phase has to be reduced. So this is the beginning of everything yeah, where at this phase you are about to develop your technology by elements effort in R&D and the time spent here will not give you any revenue return. So you need to quickly move on from this phase to the next phase. The next phase you need to face is the application launch phase. This is the phase where the technology is launched in the market as a new application. Yeah? For example, a new product or the point process. Once the new technology application is launched, the market value will pick up with the path of the technological progress. So it is characterized by slow beginning and followed by rapid growth. So this is also known as the introduction phase where the product is launched into the market. For the business points that are generate sales. The third phase in technology market life cycle is application growth phase. In the application growth phase, the technology application will begin to penetrate or go deep into the market. The extent of penetration of the technology into the market will depend on the rate of innovation and the market needs of the new technology. So at this phase, the technology and the market need to be parallel all the time. Depends on the market needs and demands, you may need to keep a standing yeah, the penetration of your technology. Right, next is the technology mature phase. In the technology mature phase, the market growth rate slows down as the technology approaches its maturity. The market value may reach a peak and then start to decline. The fifth phase of the technology market life cycle is technology substitution phase. The technology substitution phase is characterized by declining market volume as the technology is faced with being substituted by new technologies. Companies that continue to utilize the old technology will begin to experience decline in market share and revenue. So the recap phase near, this is the phase when your company faced the threat of new competitors. At that point, existing competitors yang come up with new technology and that new technology too can be your current technologies substitution. Since your punya technology dah become obsolete, you will experience the decline in market share and also revenue the cut phase technology substitution. 
Okay, the last phase uh, of technology market life cycle is technology obsolescence phase. In the technology obsolescence phase, the technology application has become obsolete and has little or no value at all. Investment in the technology during this phase is not attractive. Why it has become unattractive? It's because of there are many new and latest technology in the market. And also, technology service people need, they aren't deemed to look for the newest and latest technology. Okay, so kita boleh conclude kat sini ya, that, that, that technology development phase is the embryonic period in the technology life cycle. So application launch phase and application growth phase is the technology improvement period ataupun growth stage in the technology life cycle. Technology mature phase, technology substitution phase and technology obsolescence phase dekat uh, in the mature technology period ataupun mature stage in the technology life. Cycle. That will be all for chapter 8. Do you have questions for chapter 8? Okay, if you don't have any questions, you should have start. You have start or uh, do your MPD assignments since after the special break, you need to submit uh, the MPD. Uh, good job. Okay, uh, I do believe tadi Adha cakap and Adam cakap in a lecture before this that share the guidelines and template. So this is actually to give you um, the idea of what you can do for your NPD. So you nak tulis, the formatting and etc. So the things that you have discussed for CTC, you can masukkan dalam NPD ni. And I will love to remind you again and again that bila you develop the new product ni uh, the cut part problem tu you cannot talk about the problem of your product yeah you have to develop the product to help is the problem of customers yeah yang dalam daily life dia there is something that they need to use the product to solve their issues or problems bukan masalah product tu Okay, and this is uh, the date. We have submission date here. And next week, uh, next a little bit after the special break. Okay, these are the things that you need to do. Uh, cover page, uh, table of content. Yeah, executive summary. Uh, executive summary ni selalunya you tulis lepas you dah buat all the contents. Eh? Dah buat introduction, dah isi. Uh, MPD punya content baru you buat executive summary. Then you start with introduction. So this kat part ni problem statement and issues ni boleh nampak ya eh? cukup besar ke? Boleh lah ni eh? Boleh okay. boleh. So the, this problem statement of issues ni I do uh, believe uh, I do realize 
previous semester ada yang confused the, with this part. Ah, uh, dia orang buat apa tau? Dia orang buat masalah pro, masalah produk yang dia orang nak introduce tu. So bukan ya dekat part problem statement or issues is the issues of surrounding and you believe the customers is currently face so you uh, produce the product untuk tolong dia orang selesaikan masalah tu. Okay. So uh, you use this methodology eh? macam mana you, the, you collect all the data for your uh, NPD and then what are the limitations from gathering all the information. The past introduction baru ya move on to okay this is what be this is the main section the same section lah then ni semua ni adalah sub section ataupun sub topic this is the main topic uh, problem methodology limitation is sub topic you follow je apa get line ni let's say you did have something to add on dekat uh, each of the topic you may do, you may do so ikutlah you punya creativity tapi kalau rasa macam Pening sangat, you just have to follow the guidelines. So, the NPD punya part, the sections ni, uh, you follow je. What is the definition, classification of NPD and then the process, ya. Yeah? Kita dah belajar dekat NPD ni chapter. Pergi balik slides, go through balik, ya. Yeah? And then, okay, what most important part yang student selalu miss adalah concept testing. Ya, yeah, this concept testing ni, um, you can go back with the slides and how to do uh, go about it. And a view prototype ni, uh, lukisan saja pun tak apa sebab kita tak jumpa depan-depan ni it's hard for you to show the uh, prototype so you kena tunjuk gambar how does your product looks like and then the task marketing and the last kali CTC yang you punya group buat so I will check your CTC ensure that the CT that submitted dekat Google Classroom tu is the final one for your product kalau you nak I check your new CTC you uh, tapi you punya product baru you change the product to the uh, other things you can submit the new CTC okay and then uh, end it with conclusion, remember to uh, put references. Eh? References pun student banyak miss out juga benda ni. So put references and then appendices. Okay, do you have any questions for NPD? For now, I don't have any questions, but I think I will have uh, this once I've actually done the uh, report. Okay, so we, when you do the assignments, Nanti, got any questions, you can just ask me directly. Uh, lepas tu, Nanti, I will inform you, yeah, all of your assignments need to go for original. You have to submit to original. Have you guys go through with originals before this? Pernah guna tak original? Pleasure chat. Ah, okay, then that's good. So I will just check. You, go, you guys punya guna macam mana? We need to insert the lecturer's email. Ah, yes. So nanti saya share ya. Dia punya, I punya email. Uh, yeah. Okay, if you don't have any questions, well, let's end our class for today. Tak ada exercise, tak ada discussion. Tapi please continue use the time remaining to do discussion gunakan MPD gunakan masa yang ada ni lah supaya you tak buat ke kerja last minute. Okay with that thank you very much. Selamat bercuti. Jaga diri masing-masing. Uh, shall see you after the special break. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Thank you. Waalaikumsalam. Thank you. Me. Thank you. You're welcome. <coughs> You're welcome Putri. Welcome Azim. Bucuti, everyone, take care.